Okay, let's talk a little bit about reaction pathways. And when I say reaction pathways, I mean how exactly a reaction occurs. So even though we write down a reaction as some reactants is what we're starting with and then some products is what we get, um, it's generally not as simple as you start with the reactants and suddenly you have the products. Um, so there's kind of some steps how that actually happens, how the bonds that need to uh, break break and how the bonds that need to form form. Okay, so sometimes it is very simple and other times it is not. So a reaction pathway um, is a prediction of how exactly we're getting from reactants to products. And the reason we would care about that is because it helps us understand why a reaction would be going fast or slow. And it gives us an idea of how we could manipulate how fast or slow a reaction is going. Because if we know exactly what needs to be happening, we can change the conditions to make that more favorable or less favorable so that we can speed up or slow down the reaction. So when we talk about reaction pathways, it's important to understand a couple of terms. Um, specifically catalysts and intermediates. Uh, so those uh, types of substances are involved in reaction pathways. Uh, and so first let's start with catalysts. So a catalyst is just something that alters the pathway of a reaction. Uh, so it alters exactly what needs to happen in order for you to transition reactants to products. Okay, so the reactants and products are still the same thing, but essentially it gives it a different route. It's kind of like um, if you're driving somewhere and you get directions on Google Maps or something and it gives you multiple possible routes and tells you this is the quickest one and this one's five minutes longer and whatever, and you can pick your path, right? And so that's essentially what a catalyst is doing it. It's giving the reaction a different route okay to go through to get to the products and specifically it's giving it a route in which it's going to go faster okay um, so it's giving it the quickest route um, but a catalyst is something that is not a reactant it's not a product it's not consumed by the reaction um, typically a, a catalyst actually does bind to at least one of the reactants initially. So it kind of latches onto it and holds it in place to where the other reactant can react with it more easily. Um, and so it binds with it, it forms an activated complex. But once that reactant reacts, that catalyst gets re-released. So in a way, it participates in the reaction, but it's not considered a reactant or product because it isn't actually consumed and it's not something new that is formed. Okay, it's there at the beginning and it's there at the end. Okay, so it's unchanged, um, but it does cause the reaction to go faster and that is because it gives the reaction a path that is quicker. Okay. Um, and really the reason that that react or that pathway is quicker is because the activated complex that forms has a lower energy than the transition state or activated complex of the uncatalyzed reaction. So if we looked at an energy diagram that tells you about the reactants and products, well, we can have the reactants have a certain energy, the products have a certain energy, um, and so, those um, are on your reaction diagram, your energy diagram, but then there's always in an energy diagram for a reaction, there's some peak, okay? And on this curve, the red curve is the reaction with no catalyst. And so without a catalyst, we would go from the energy of the reactants all the way up to this peak, and that would be the EA of the regular reaction. Okay, whereas when it's catalyzed, it gives this reaction a different pathway. So it forms a different transition state or a different activated complex, sometimes multiple. So in this case, 
it's showing that there's two humps, and so there's an activated complex here and here for the catalyzed reaction, that blue curve, okay? But both of those, both of those intermediates that are being formed, they have a lower energy than the transition state for the original reaction, okay? And so that's what allows the reaction to go faster because if it gives it a pathway where the energy it needs for the collisions is lower, then on average, you have more molecules that have that energy that can meet that criteria, okay? Whereas without the catalyst, there's less molecules that can actually achieve the energy. And so it's going to take longer because until, you know, enough energy gets passed to a given molecule, it won't be able to achieve collisions with the appropriate transition state energy, okay, or the appropriate activation energy. Um, okay, so let's see. I'll erase my mess off of that. So you can see the regular plot. Um, now, catalysts, um, that's kind of a figuring out what's a catalyst for something is really a trial and error kind of thing. Um, so that's pretty tricky uh, to know what would be a catalyst. Um, but there's lots of reactions that um, naturally always work with a catalyst or really the only way it's going to work at a rate that's feasible is with a catalyst, um, specifically reactions that occur in our body um, or any, any biological organism. Um, there's reactions that rely on catalysts and your body or whatever organism naturally produces those catalysts because it needs them. Okay, and those we would usually call enzymes. Okay, so an enzyme is a catalyst, but an enzyme is a catalyst that catalyzes some specific reaction for a li living organism. Sometimes enzymes can catalyze multiple reactions, um, but they're, they've got to be similar in some way. Um, but there's lots of them that all they do is make this one reaction go. Okay. But in like our body enzymes, these are really complicated molecules. They're huge, um, they're huge molecules, huge proteins that um, actually have what we call an active site. And so a location that has a very specific arrangement on it to where this very particular reactant can bind to it and nothing else can. And so then it holds that reactant in place and then something else can come in and react with it very quickly. Um, and so enzymes are really important um, in biological reactions, but you should realize that they are simply catalysts. And so they're substances that just alter the pathway of the reaction so it can go faster. Um, and for biological reactions, usually if that enzyme isn't present, it's almost as if the reaction doesn't occur because it occurs so slow, okay? And that's where some actual diseases and stuff comes up. Um, some people don't have the enzymes they need for a particular reaction to occur in their body. So maybe their body can't digest a certain food or you know, it can't do some certain function that requires this enzyme. And some of those things are fixable by, you know, different drug treatments and things like that, and others are not. Um, and so this is a really important concept, not only for in chemistry lab, but also biologically um, enzymes. Okay. Now, the other important term with respect to reaction pathways is intermediates. Um, so an intermediate um, is something that gets formed temporarily in your reaction. So it's something that we don't actually show in a reaction when we write it. So when we write the chemical equation for some reaction, uh, we typically only give the reactants and products. A lot of times we don't even list the catalyst. Um, we definitely don't list any intermediates, okay? But if you see a reaction pathway, those things are given. Um, 
but this intermediate, it forms temporarily, but the reason it's not an overall reaction, to, you know, is because it actually is reconsumed. Okay, so it's something that forms, but then it it then converts to products. Okay, um, so let's look at um, a reaction pathway or a couple of reaction pathways. Now, sometimes instead of using the term reaction pathway, um, people will use the term reaction mechanism. Uh, and so it's the same thing, reaction pathway, reaction mechanism, same thing, uh, depends on kind of where you're at in looking at these things. Because I think if you're looking more in depth, most of the time people use the term mechanism instead, but it's all the same thing. Um, so let's look at a particular reaction, specifically the reaction of ozone going to oxygen. So O3 gas going to O2 gas. Okay, and this happens uh, with this reaction that I'm listing here. And I'm listing it as the net reaction because that's overall what's happening. Your reactant is the O3 molecules and your product is the O2 molecules. Okay, um, so that's what you get. But um, the question is, how do you get from O3 to O2? What has to happen? It's not just this instantaneous thing. Um, so we want to know so we can better understand how we can manipulate it. Um, so there's pathways that have been determined for this and studied, and um, one pathway that has been determined for this reaction is for without a catalyst um, that the ozone molecules, you have an O3 molecule, and if you shine UV light on it, or if it's out in the atmosphere where the sun is exposing it to UV light, um, it will break down into an O2 molecule and an oxygen atom, okay? Now that can't be all there is to it because you notice in the overall reaction, there's no individual oxygen atom, okay? So more needs to occur. Um, so what happens is this oxygen atom that isn't even part of the overall reaction that is initially formed, now it can react with another ozone molecule because an individual oxygen atom is not stable. So it will react quickly with what it can find, okay? So if it collides with an O3 molecule, what will happen is that then the O3 and the O will form two O2s, okay? And so that is giving you an indication of how we actually get step-by-step step from the reactants to the products. Um, but in this, what you should notice is that oxygen atom is not in the overall reaction. Um, and you need to understand what is that? Is this oxygen atom, is that a catalyst or an intermediate? It's one or the other. Well, think about what's happening. It initially is not there and it forms, okay? And then it's reconsumed, meaning it's an intermediate, okay? Um, so the oxygen, the individual oxygen atom that is formed is an intermediate in this reaction. Uh, and this pathway, um, if you were to add those steps together, what you would get is the net reaction, okay? And when I say add those steps together, I mean take the reactants of each step and put them all on one side and take the products of each step and put them on the other side and then cancel out anything that's the same on both sides. And what you'll get is the overall reaction, which is showing us that the reaction pathway is relating to that reaction. So it is a feasible you know, uh, mechanism or pathway to get there, okay? It is, um, if it didn't add together to come up with that reaction, it wouldn't make sense at all, okay? Um, but in this case, when you add that stuff together, you do get the net reaction. So that at least says, well, this pathway could happen. Now, whether or not that's really what happens would take lots of experiments, um, and it's not always obvious what experiments you could do, uh, but there's experiments that can be done to help us understand if this is actually what's happening. 
okay? Um, but that gives you an idea of what a reaction pathway is. It's telling you step by step what needs to happen, okay, for this reaction to occur. Now that one doesn't have a catalyst, okay? Um, so this reaction we can also perform with a catalyst. So we're going to look at the same net reaction, so forming O2 from O3, um, but with a catalyst, okay? And if there's a catalyst, of course, there's going to be a different pathway. So here's an example of this reaction performed with a catalyst. And you can see that the pathway is different. You definitely have different steps because now we have chlorine in the mix, right? And there wasn't any chlorine in that reaction before. Um, and so what we're doing is in this pathway showing that first we could react the O3 with a chlorine atom, okay? And if that happens, then you form ClO and O2. Um, and so that ClO that's formed, that definitely needs to go away because that wasn't in the original reaction, right? And so if you look at the next step, you'll see that the ClO, it does in fact go away. It reacts with another O3 and forms some more O2, okay? So in this, there's actually a few extra items that weren't there before, okay? So you have Cl, that wasn't there before, and that we're putting in at the start, and at the very end, it's back, okay? So in step one, it's a reactant, and step two, it's a product. So it's something we put into the reaction, and it reformed, okay? So it's not consumed. So that is a catalyst, whereas, oh, whoops, that is a catalyst. And then the ClO, that's something that forms and then it is reconsumed, okay? So although those two things are not part of the overall reaction, they can still be part of the pathway. Okay, it's just the CL is a catalyst, so it's helping to provide a new path for the reaction. And this path actually has a lower energy intermediate, so that CLO actually has a lower energy than the oxygen. Um, so there's a lower activation energy to actually create that versus the oxygen atom that's in that one without the catalyst, meaning this pathway will occur faster. And if you were to sum those two steps together, again, you would get the overall reaction. So if you put all the reactants on one side, all the products on the other side, and then cancel out what is the same on both sides, you would get the same net reaction, okay? Um, but this one with the catalyst, it would go faster because it's easier essentially for the system to create ClO when it collides with Cl than it is for an O3 molecule to be broken down by UV light, okay? And so it's a different pathway, a pathway that has a lower activation energy for its transition state, so it goes faster, okay? Okay, we're not going to look at reaction pathways any further. That's it. Um, just understanding kind of the basics of what they are um, and the terminology associated with them.